Hello there friends and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist and we are doing basic lesson number four where I will be showing you how to add some text to your document. Now adding text to your document uh, in and of itself is a pretty straightforward thing to do. You just go down to the text tool or hit the hotkey of T or I guess type tool I should say and then you would click in your document where you want to insert your text and just start typing. So in this case I'll type in figure one since that's what we're looking at here and then that's really all you need to do so for basic entering of text it's pretty straightforward so I thought what I would do in this video is go through some of the different formatting options or some of the different tool presets that you might not be aware with uh, aware of uh, so first of all we'll start by going right down to the type tool uh, itself and if you click and hold on it you'll see we have a couple options here the first being just your regular horizontal type tool so that's the obvious one then you have vertical type which is pretty self-explanatory you'll just type up and down instead of left and right and then you have these two horizontal mask type tools. And so with these, uh, instead of laying down actual type, uh, instead you'll be laying down a selection outline in the shape of text or type. And so from there what you can do is create masks, which can give you some interesting effects for your text, but you're probably not going to need that for your figure. And to be totally honest with you, I've never used these before in my life once. But, you know, they're there if you want them, so good to know. And so if we go up here to the text file menu, uh, we have some additional options. So the first button here is for your tool presets. So if you remember back to uh, basic lesson one where I showed you how to create a document preset, which allowed you to save all the parameters that you had set for your document. Um, this is basically the same thing except for the type tool. So say if you have uh, like a typeface and a style and a font size that you are happy with and that you want to keep for your future figures, what you can do is go in here and click the new page icon and give it a name. So we can call this one figure type and hit enter or press OK. And so this will be saved here. So if you were to go to change your font or if you were in a new document working with different settings uh, and you wanted to come back to what you use for your figure, uh, you could just click this here, this uh, button here, the label here that you've created, and that would bring back everything, all, all of the settings that you have here. So that's pretty handy for maintaining consistency, or if you come up with a different set of font styles or um, whatever, something like that that you like and you want to save so you don't have to actually remember it. The next uh, button here is uh, pretty self-explanatory, so it's either uh, it switches your text from vertical to horizontal, so it's kind of redundant with uh, what we saw down here with the type tool. This next box is your font selector, so you can either click the drop down list or just type in whatever font you like. Um, so I'm using Arial Regular here, which is a really good uh, typeface for f uh, figures, but you can type whatever you like. Um, in the next box we have uh, font style, so with Arial in particular you've got lots of options from black to narrow, but it will be different for every typeface. Uh, usually you, you get um, regular italic and bold, um, but it depends on the font that you're using. Uh, the next one here is uh, font size. So again, you can either click the drop down or type in what you like. Uh, but what you can also do is, uh, if you see that my cursor here is changed to the hand and some little arrows here, you can click and drag, um, and that will adjust your type size as well. And it's handy if you just want to do something quickly, but it's kind of hard to be accurate with. Um, but it's if you're just trying to do something fast, it's nice. The next box here is anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing is actually kind of complicated, or the math behind it is kind of complicated, and I do not understand it, to be perfectly honest with you. But for the purposes of Photoshop, uh, all you need to know is, is that it will deal with how your edges look. So if we were to turn it to none, you can see, maybe I might zoom in a little bit here by pushing Control plus, uh, you can see now that my edges are pretty jagged and this is kind of what it would look like if you were trying to make your figure in Microsoft Paint for instance. Um, so with anti-aliasing really you can choose any of these options and they're gonna look basically the same there's some sort of subtle differences but what it does it just smooths out those edges and makes it a bit easier on the eyes so I'm gonna zoom back out 200 uh, percent. The next set of buttons is your text alignment so that is pretty straightforward it would work how it expect uh, you, it would. It would work how you would expect it would here, this box, we have our color, uh, text color. So if we click it, you get this uh, color picker here. But what you can also do uh, is, if you're 
uh, take your cursor out of the color picker and uh, you can click anywhere in your document to select a color um, from your figure. So that's if you want to maybe match it to some of the colors in your figure. It's uh, an easy way to do it. Uh, I'm just going to go for black right now though. <clears throat> this next box is your text warping tool. So you're not going to need this for your figures, but it does give you some kind of neat little playful effects that you can use for your text, uh, which would be really handy if uh, you want to make a birthday card for your grandmother, which maybe you should because uh, I'm sure that would mean a lot to her. But I'm going to cancel out of that for now. Uh, this next box will open your, well, in this case, it opens a whole bunch of panels for me, so I'm going to minimize this. But what it's trying to do is open the character and paragraph panels here. So I'm going to start with the character panel. And in this panel, you have uh, a lot of redundant information. So you have the same font uh, selector, uh, style selector, font size. And so here you've also got some character spacing options. So these are things that you're probably not going to need. Uh, but it does give you a lot of control over how the text should look. So for instance, the tracking here uh, will affect your character spacing basically. So if you, you can increase it to have space your uh, characters out a little more, but generally you're gonna be fine to leave these with the defaults, but you can play around with them. Uh, similarly with uh, text or character height and width, uh, again, you'll probably be fine leaving these at 100%, but if you want to have a little more control, you can play around with those. Uh, you have here um, your baseline, so this just affects where uh, lays down your uh, text. But again, really not that important for our purposes. Color picker again here, but so here's here's actually really what I wanted to point out to you is this uh, row of options here. So you have a faux bold and faux faux italic effect. So if your font doesn't have uh, an italic or bold uh, style option here. You can create basically the same effect using these buttons, which should always be available, I think. Uh, you also have all caps and small caps, along with superscript and subscript, and also underline and strike through. So these are some pretty common um, text effects that you might not know are there unless you were to look in this character uh, panel here. And to be honest, I didn't know about this for the longest time, and I was working really inefficiently without it. Uh, so the next thing to look at is the paragraph uh, panel here. So I've gone ahead, I'm going to control zero to view my full document, uh, view my full document, and I've put in some dummy paragraphs here, and I'm going to hide my guides. And basically, uh, if you, yeah, I should note that if you want to apply the changes from the panel, you should select the layer of text that you want to work with. So in the paragraph panel here, uh, you've got your basic text alignment options, so left, center, and right, and you can see it updating here. Uh, same with justification, uh, works how you would expect. You've got your margins, uh, so right now they're set to 10 point, but I can put them to zero. So that's left margin, right margin, and then you've got your text indent, or your paragraph indent, so I've set it to 10, but you can see if I change it, the indent uh, disappears there. And then you've got your space before and space after paragraphs. So I'll set that to zero, maybe set this to 10. And again, that just gives you control over how your paragraphs are gonna look. And then you've got the hyphenate uh, checkbox here. So I'm just gonna zoom back in again, to up to figure one. And just to give you a really quick uh, example, maybe I'll go to 100% of how it would work when putting text in my figure. Uh, let's say I wanted to label these immunofluorescence panels. So I would click in here and I can just call this blue. <clears throat> and I'm gonna highlight it because right now it's black and you can't see it. And so say I wanted to have a similar color into my uh, image here. I can use the color picker to pick an image out or a color out. And it's a little dark so I might bump it up a bit. So it just pops out a little bit more. And then I would hit okay. And I can sort of reposition this up to the right hand corner. And a handy little trick uh, that you can use, instead of going to your type tool and clicking in again, what you can do if you have the move tool selected, uh, if you hold the alt key, you can click on this text uh, layer here and just click and drag. And if you hold the shift key, it actually constrains it to the same uh, horizontal position. And so if I let go, uh, it's positioned there. And if I double click on the layer, or on this T here in the layers panel, that will allow me to start typing again, so I can type green this time. 
And I might actually, I forgot to do this the first time, but I'm going to write justify. So uh, right align my text so that it uh, lines up on the right edge here. And again, uh, if you double click the T icon, I can change the color to green. Again, it's uh, a little dark though, so I'm going to bump it up to a fluorescent green here. And it's a little redundant, but I will do the same thing again. Uh, just click and drag while holding Alt and Shift. Just bring it over to my red panel here. Double click here, we'll call this red. And I will select it and choose my red. And there you go. So I will click the plus there, to, or the check mark there to uh, accept the changes. So if I just zoom out a bit again, you can see some nicely positioned text, very readable. Um, and I think that basically gives you the, the gist of how to get text into your figure. So again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below, and I will do my best to answer them as best I can. And I think we will call out there for this week's lesson. So I will sign off, as I always do, by saying we worked hard to get that data of yours, so I'm hoping that uh, if we work hard together, or maybe just a little bit harder together, uh, we can make that data look amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.